realize it's God's will that every person in the body of Christ would serve as a minister. Not every Christian is called to be in full-time ministry, but every Christian is called to minister to others. The word minister simply means serve. This happens whenever we are others focused rather than simply thinking about ourselves. I invite you to join me for today's message titled, Are You a Minister? Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. We're going to open up today to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20. And I'm going to share with you a message today. The title of this message is, Are You a Minister? Are you a minister? Now, somebody may look at me and say, well, Pastor, wait a minute. No, I'm not a minister. You're the minister. Well, I want to rephrase that again. Are you a minister? I didn't ask you if you were in full-time ministry. I ask you if you're a minister. And of course, the answer to that question is, yes, you are a minister. You are a minister. And you say, well, pastor, wait a minute now. That's your job. You're the minister. That's your responsibility. But do you understand, really, my responsibility, according to Ephesians 4, is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Now you say, well, pastor, if I'm a minister, where's my congregation? Okay, well, here's where your congregation is. You know your next door neighbor? That's part of your congregation. You know that person you interact with time and time and time again at the bank? That's part of your congregation. That person that you go to the convenience store and you see them time and time and time again. Every time you fill up, you see that person. Guess what? That's part of your congregation. That person that you interact with on a routine basis, that's part of your congregation. You see, God assigns us geographically, and wherever he assigns us, he has a ministry in mind that there are people that we're called to minister to. And you know what the biggest problem in the body of Christ can be is whenever the body of Christ is thinking, well, somebody else will reach that person. Somebody else will do it. Lord, send somebody to reach that person. You know what the Lord's probably saying is, yeah, I'm I'm wanting to use you because the very fact that you have compassion towards them, the very fact that you have a soft heart towards that person, that's probably an indication that I'm wanting to use you to reach that person. So here's how it works. God calls people into the public schools. You know why God calls them there? Well, they said because they're called to be a teacher. And I agree, you're called to be a teacher. But can I tell you, you're not only called to be a teacher, but you're called to be a minister into people's lives. Now, what's the difference between that? Because see, when you're educating, you're just helping them mentally. You're helping them as far as from an intellectual standpoint to grasp the topic, what they're learning. But whenever you're ministering, you're not just helping a person intellectually, you're helping them spiritually. You're reaching out to them to be able to interact with them and to minister spirit to spirit. You're there to try to help them. And so what we want to do is, is we want to realize whether we're called into, as a teacher, if we're called into the business world, if we're called as law enforcement, we're called whatever our vocation in life is, you see, we're all ministers. Now, I'm going to take it a next step. Did you know you are a prime minister? What do I mean by prime minister? Primary minister. What do I mean by that? There's a lot of people, they're never going to meet some high profile, you know, some person that you're thinking maybe the Lord will use that person to reach him. They're not going to meet those other people. But you know who they're going to meet? They've met you. And they know you. And you become the primary minister in their life. Matter of fact, they don't even really know another Christian. They might not even know another believer. 
I've had that happen before when people say, I, you know, I was in a crisis way before I was ever in full-time ministry when somebody was going through a crisis and they made the statement, your name came to my mind as though you were kind of my, my only lifeline. Y'all remember that program on television, you know, when they'd have that who wants to be a millionaire and then they'd get stuck and they'd think of that friend that they could call that was a know-it-all? that kind of would be my lifeline, like, you know, I'm stuck, but this person's pretty good at this, and I'm going to call them, and maybe they can help me out. You know, there's a lot of people, there in life, and they're stuck, and they don't know what to do, and you know who you are? You're kind of their lifeline. You're kind of that one that they think, oh, my Lord, you know, maybe they'll know what I'm supposed to do. I want us to approach this year. I want us to approach the months that are ahead of us this way. I want you to think of yourself as a minister, That wherever you work, wherever you interact, the people that are around you, you just don't want to have an impact on their life socially. You don't want to only have an impact on their life mentally or emotionally. And you don't only want to have a, a superficial contact with their life, but you really want to have a deep interaction with them from a spiritual standpoint to where they glean something from their interaction from you that they really aren't receiving from anybody else. And that is, there's a spirit to spirit. There's somebody that is out ministering unto them. Now, when you go to Matthew chapter 20, you read verse number 28, it says this, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That's the English Standard Version. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served. In other words, Jesus' whole goal in life was not, I just want people to do for me, but Jesus came to serve other people. Now, the King James Version says this, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life as a ransom for many. So we're called, every one of us are called to be a minister. And guess what? If you do not fulfill your responsibility, somebody's life is going to suffer if you don't step up, if you don't do what you're called to do. In other words, what I'm responsible to do is to help people. Now, let me give you an example. One time years ago, Uh, Sharon and I were having dinner. Now, this is many years ago. We were having dinner at this restaurant. It was kind of one of these all-you-can-eat buffet things, you know. So we were there and enjoying our time. And and as I walked by this table, there was an older man, and he stood up, and he was choking. And he was just, (coughs) and of course, I've had a little bit of training in CPR, but that was a long time ago. And I'd never done the Heimlich maneuver on anybody in my life, but I thought, you know, I'm all he's got right now. And so this man was choking, and he was an older man, and I just came around the back of him. I didn't know him. I didn't walk up and introduce myself and give him my card or anything. I just walked up behind him, and I did this maneuver and, you know, freed up his passageway, and he started breathing, and, and he looked at me like, oh, thank you so much. I'm going to tell you, I wasn't the most qualified guy in the building. I can promise you that. I was not the most, oh, he's got expert training. He's the most skillful in this. No, I had none of that. I just happened to see the need. Now, I think a lot of people are saying, oh, now, Pastor, I don't know the Bible like you know the Bible. Or, or Pastor, I don't know all the, I don't understand all the particulars of Bible prophecy, and I don't understand all the particulars of eschatology, and I don't. Do you know John 3, 16? Okay, now, I'm going to give you a revelation here. But you see, half of the world over half of the world, has never heard John 3, 16. Oh, pastor, I don't know all the particulars about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, let me just help you here. You know, half of the world hasn't ever heard about the first coming of Jesus Christ. So what I want you to do is not feel like, well, some way or another, I'm not qualified or I can't help people. You can help people if you care about people. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. So when I was in high school, we had one of these extended revivals at our church. Actually, I just graduated from high school. So we had one of these extended revivals that went on night after night after night after night. And finally, I had a friend of mine, and he said, Tom, uh, why don't you and I go out street witnessing? And so I thought, hey, that sounds great. Let's do it. So we got in the car, and we went downtown Oklahoma City, went down where the bus station is now. 
And so we were down in that area, and I can still remember there was a fellow that I walked up to. Man, I was on fire. I'd been in this revival. Man, it was a Pentecostal revival, and the fire was all over me. And I walked up to this guy, and I, I met him. I said, hi there. We're here to tell people about Jesus. Do you know Jesus? And his response was this, I'm Catholic. I looked at him, and I go, okay, it was good talking to you, you know, and I... <laughs> I had no idea. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to say. I mean, he just shattered my world. I'd had nothing to say. But now here's what I want to say. It was a beginning. And you know what some people want to do. They want to feel like, you know, Pastor, when I get my degree and from the theological seminary, then I'll be eligible to go out and help people. No, you don't have to have a degree from the theological seminary. You know what you need to have is a heart of love towards people. And when you see people that are in need, you just care about them. Amen. Now, you've heard this statement. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. But when you care, that has a profound impact on people's lives. Just a few months ago, a couple in the church had me over to their home, and they had a friend in that was from another country, and he's a pastor, and I was, I was visiting with him. He just walked up to me, and he has a large ministry, and he travels a lot and goes to a lot of different places in the world. But he just walked up to me, and he said, hey, how are you doing? And within the first three minutes, he said this, hey, I just want you to know I've been praying for you. Now, I'm thinking to myself, now, isn't that interesting here he is, lives in another country, has a lot of responsibilities. He interacts with literally hundreds of people, but yet he's been thinking about me. And he said, I just want you to know, I've been praying for you. As far as I was concerned for the rest of the day, he had my full attention because see, it just registered he cared about. He cared about what I was going through. Now, here's what I want to say to you. If you're going to be a minister, it doesn't matter intellectually how much you know. Do you care about people? Now, you say, Pastor, I care about people. If they got their act together, I care about them. But I'm going to tell you, most people that you meet that God brings your way, they're not ready-made. They're not all up to speed. They're not ready for ministry. Most of the people that Jesus met, whether it was Mary Magdalene with all those demon spirits that were inside of her, or whether it was the madman of Gadara, or whether it was people that were bound by religious spirits like the Pharisees, they weren't ready to roll, so to speak. They were people that needed help. Now, this year, God has orchestrated and foreordained in your life divine appointments. And God has people that he's really expecting you to minister to. Now, you say, Pastor, I didn't even pray for that person. I didn't even pray about that. But here's what the Bible says in John 4. Jesus made this statement. I have sent you to reap where you bestowed no labor. Other people have labored, and you're just entering into their labors. In other words, this isn't all the byproduct of your prayer life. Thanks so much for joining me for this message titled, Are You a Minister? Each one of us are called to minister to others that we interact with. Never underestimate your influence on others for the kingdom of God. You're in the kingdom because someone ministered to you. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.